It's the CTV Beam Game of the Week. It's the Phoenix City Crawdads versus the Marietta Patriots. Hello everybody, this is Victor Feliciano. Alongside Denny Grimes behind the camera, we're going to give you the pitch-by-pitch -pitch action of Sunbelt League Baseball. Uh, this will be our final broadcast of the Phoenix City Crawdads as they come in with a record of 5-13. and 13. Now they do have a couple more games afterwards, but we will be broadcasting uh, this game. And they come in 5-13. They are eliminated from playoff contention. Uh, the uh, top three teams move on uh, to play. Uh, two versus three have a one single elimination game. Winner moves on to play the division winner, which Marietta happens to be the division winner of this division that the Crawdads play. What's going to be exciting about this game is four of the five league leaders in hitting are going to be in the lineup today. So we're going to see a lot of uh, swinging of the bats. Hopefully a lot of base hits, a lot of offense for this game. And we're here at Bill Bowers Field, Tim Fanning. Bill P Bowers Park, Tim Fanning's Field right here on the campus of Glenwood. Sit back and enjoy this game of Sunbelt League Baseball right here on CTV Beam, Channel 7. Okay, so the Marietta Patriots will come up to the plate with leading off Mason Callaway, the center fielder. And there's Pap. Pop foul out, out of play. We're underway. On the mound for the Crawdads is pitcher Nate Dupree. And he evens the count one and one. Dupree, this is his third appearance of the season. And there's pop foul again. Now the count is one and two. Nate Dupree, third appearance, 3.60 ERA. Has no record. Five strikeouts, four walks. There's another pop foul as Callaway stays alive. There's a grounder to second, over to first, and one away. That'll bring up Noah Hill, and Noah Hill is the extra hitter in the lineup. And so in this league, the Sun Belt League, uh, the pitchers are not hitting today, and so they'll have an extra hitter. Marietta Patriots actually has an extra hitter and a designated hitter. Whereas the Crawdads are just has just has the designated hitter and there's foul away. Noah Hill comes in with a 267 batting average. No home runs, four RBIs. A swing and a miss, and it's 0-2. The 0-2 is high and it's one and two. We're just underway here. Bill Bowers Park on the campus of Glenwood High School here in Phoenix City. It's a grounder to short. It's a scoop, the throw, and could not be scooped up by the first baseman. And we'll have a runner at first. A little challenge there as the ball Hopped its way over to first and ground is wet still from the rains that occurred in the afternoons here in the Phoenix City area. We were attempting to, we had attempted to get you a game last week, but the bottom fell out in the second inning. It was a very isolated shower and that shower decided to make its camp right here on this field and quickly washed out the game versus the Atlanta Crackers. And there's foul, watch out. There's a hop over our way and everybody's safe. Lands harmless 
in front of us. And the count evens one and one. One out, runner at first. And the pitch, swing and a miss. And the count's now one and two. Austin Farr is at the plate. The one, two, stays alive. Farr comes in with a batting average of 268. Two home runs, 15 RBIs. As a matter of fact, as we mentioned at the top of the uh, broadcast, we have four of the top five league leaguers in the uh, batting average. And there's runner going, throw to second, pops away, goes in the outfield. Runner is going to be advancing over to third from the mishandled throw. So Mason Callaway is at third with one out and Farr has an opportunity for an RBI. And that's a good job by the catcher to keep it in front of him. John Foster behind the plate for the crawdads. Counts full, 3-2. One out, runner at third. The full count is foul. Makes its way over to the base coach. Count remains three and two. Austin Farr is tied for the league lead in RBIs with Frank Wager, who is on the crawdads. So not only do we have batting average hitters, but folks that can scoot runners in. So let's see if uh, Farr is going to add to that. Mean cut and a miss, and that's the second strikeout recorded for the crawdads. Delivered by Nate Dupree. And coming up is uh, Sean D McDermott, the first baseman. We have two outs. Mason Callaway is at third for the Patriots. And Dupree delivers the first pitch. It's a pop-up to right. It's drifting back, drifting back. And it's over the fence. It drifted and drifted and it made its way over for a home run. And it is two to nothing, Patriots. You probably wouldn't hear it in the background, but one of the fans was saying, you don't know in this field when that ball's popped up like that, it looks pretty routine and it just finds its way, way over the metal fencing. And it is now two to nothing Patriots. Tyler Adams, the designated hitter comes up to the plate and he quickly swings that first pitch but fouls it away. Sean McDormand, that was his third home run of the season and added two more RBIs so he's at 12 RBIs for the season and McDermott is now tied in the league of home runs with Tyler Adams, who is also playing for the Patriots, who's actually at the plate. So Adams is looking to notch another one ahead of McDermott. And he watches that one like the rest of us to end the top half of the first inning. However, the Patriots strike first Two run home run by Sean McDermott and it's Crawdad's turn to swing at the bats and we'll go to the bottom of the first. Two to nothing, Patriots, Sun Belt League on CTV Beam, Channel 7. We go to the bottom of the first inning, Crawdad's lead off with Blake Johnson, the shortstop.
and just in for a strike. Johnson comes in with a 226 batting average. No home runs, two RBIs. And on the mound for Marietta is Ryan Wesley. He delivers and Johnson got a piece of that. Counts one and two. The one, two, there's a pop up to the right. It's gonna stay in the field. Catch is made, one away. Catch made by the right fielder, Brent Ritchie. And that'll bring up the designated hitter, Drew Lingo. Lingo comes in with a batting average of 345. Two home runs, 12 RBIs. And he's one of the five batting average leaders that we have mentioned. He's coming in in the fifth spot with the 345. He is 23 points behind teammate Frank Wager. There's a pop up to right. Deja vu, but it's drifting. It's at the warning track. The catch is made. Two outs. Nothing is nothing is sure. An out that's not sure, and a home run's not sure on this field. The ball was just floating up there and made its way to the glove, and we're coming to Frank Wager, third baseman. And there's pop foul. That was a shot. It's a pretty view, but it's out of play. Frank Wager comes in with a 368 batting average. Frank Wager is actually in the running for jockeying for home run and RBIs as well to try to get triple crown per se. And there's a shot up the middle, base hit. So he'll add on to that batting average. And that'll bring up John Foster, the catcher. Now batting the catcher, number 24, Jonathan Foster. John Foster comes in with a 250 batting average, no home runs, one RBI. And that's in for a strike. The 0 1. Count evens 1 and 1. Ryan Wesley, who is on the mound for Marietta, this is his sixth appearance. He has three wins, no losses. 3.15 ERA, and that's straight to the shortstop. Crawdads put one base runner, but left them stranded. So we finish one, and Marietta leads two to nothing. Sun Belt League Baseball right here on CTV Beam, Channel 7. We go to the top of the second inning, and Nate Stinson is coming up to the plate for the Marietta Patriots, who are up two to nothing. And mean cut and a miss. Stinson pops it up right to the center fielder. Center fielder had to play a little bit with the sun there, even though it was coming right at him. But made the out. And Sam Seaman will come in to the plate, and he is batting 261. No home runs, 
three RBIs. And Seaman is the Patriots shortstop. All right, the count's 2 and 0. Oh. And it counts now two and one. Now it's in there to three and one. That's three one from Dupree. And Sam Seaman makes his way to first on the walk, and that'll bring up Drake Fricks. Fricks comes in batting 188. No home run, one RBI. My first pitch is high, ball one. So the first. Mean swing and a miss. Count evens one and one. Nate Dupree. On the, those to first. And he's playing for Kennesaw State. So we've got D1 player on the mound. It's mentioned Sunbelt League. It's a summer league based out of Atlanta. There are eight teams in the league. Seven of them are in the Atlanta region. Su suburbs, uh, Lawrenceville and around the Atlanta area and Columbia, well, Phoenix City being the only one that is outside of that area. So teams have to travel to Phoenix City and Phoenix City has to do a lot of traveling up to Atlanta to play the road games against the teams in, in the Atlanta area. To a lot of people's surprise, the Crawdads have been playing for several years in this league, making the playoffs. This is actually the first year they'll miss in quite a while. That's the count, it's 2-2. Two, two. And there's a base hit to left. And runners will remain first and second as, they, as the toss comes into the infield. And the right fielder, Brent Ritchie, will come up to the plate. So got a walk and a base hit. Sam Siemens at second. Drake Fricks is at first. Brent Ritchie. Comes in batting 128. He's got one RBI. And he swings in the miss. And count evens one and one. Despite Fricks playing in Marietta, he actually plays ball here at CVCC, just down the road, down 431. He just played first season with CVCC this past season. Counts two and one. Dupree delivers. That was high. Nice stop by Foster. Runners at first and second for the Patriots. Counts three and one. We're at the top of the second inning.
and the bases are loaded as Dupree walks Richie and Eric White comes up to the plate. Despite that he's at the bottom of the lineup, he's actually leading the league in batting average, 373 batting average, and he pops it up. First baseman's shagging it down, catch is made. And that was a quick second out for the Patriots. We'll go to the top of the order. Mason Calloway. Now batting with center fielder number five, Mason Calloway. Mason Calloway reached base in the first inning and scored off the home run by Sean McDermott. And that's where we stand, two to nothing. Mean cut and a miss. The 0-1, Mr. Chopper, can the Crawdads get out of this jam? They do. So the Patriots load up the bases, but they leave them as is. And we go to the bottom of the second. Patriots leading two to nothing. Sun Belt League baseball right here on CTV Beam Channel 7. We go to the bottom of the second inning and Price Peters leads off for the Crawdads, first baseman. Price Peters comes in with a 231 batting average, and he's got four RBIs. Count even, one and one. So Sunbelt League, their schedule runs about 25, 26 games. Initially, initially, I believe they were going for about 30, but there was a lot of rainouts for teams. And so there, was a lot, there were some rescheduling, but a lot of cancellations. They didn't want to uh, press too close to students having to go back to school. Once again, this is just a develop, developmental league. No one gets paid. Each of these players are attending college or just graduated from college as some of the players from Glenwood are on the team. They had just recently earned a state championship right here on this, from this field. And there's a shot to short. The throw to first, one away. And that'll bring up Sam McWhorter. McWhorter comes in batting 111 with one RBI. McWhorter. Mean swing and a miss. The 01. Check swing. They're going to check it. They say he went. So McWhorter is down on the count. 0 and 2. And he goes down swinging. The first strikeout recorded for Ryan Wesley. And that'll bring up Tanner Knowles, the second baseman. The second baseman. Tanner Knowles. Played here in Phoenix City. Just graduated and is making, hasn't, during print time here of the roster, and decided where he was going to take his talents for college. And there's a grounder. The shortstop, nice. Nice play by Sam Seaman. 
back-to-back -back grounders over his way. No runs, no, hit, no errors, no men left on base. We finished two, and the Patriots of Marietta leads the Phoenix City Crawdads two to nothing. Sun Belt League Baseball right here on CTV Beam, Channel 7. We go to the top of the third inning. Due up for the Patriots, Noah Hill, Austin Farr, and Sean McDermott. That first pitch. Ball one. John Foster behind the plate with pleading. There's a pop up over our way. That's up, Danny. Safely out of play, everybody. Count evens one and one. Noah Hill struck out in the first inning. But this time he makes amends with a base hit. And Patriots lead off with a base hit, and Austin Farr comes up to the plate, and he too struck out. So he'll look to. Even the match here. Uh, first pitch. It's one and oh. Single bunt throw to second. They got him plenty of time. Nice play by John Foster. Great tag by Blake Johnson to get Noah Hill out. Caught stealing. The one away. There's a pop up over our way, Danny. Coming right here. You got the shot right here. Now it's made. Sean McDermott, two run shot in the first inning. Mean swing and a miss. Count evens one and one. McDermott plays for Mercer. He is not a little guy. He is 6'4", 235. And counts two and one. Count evens two and two. Two outs, base is clear. And Dupree strikes out McDermott to end the inning. Three up, three down. We go to the bottom of the third. Two to nothing, Patriots. Sun Belt League baseball right here on CTV Beam, Channel 7. We go to the bottom of the third inning. Patriots leading two to nothing. Brett Griffin comes up to the plate to lead off for the Crawdads. Griffin batting 111. And there's pop up right. Easy pickings for Richie, and there's quickly one away. Lee K, the left fielder, come up to the plate, get his first crack at bat. Lee K batting 100. 
He does have five RBIs. And there's a shot, base hit. Nice, nice screamer down the, onto the field. And we go to the top of the order with Blake Johnson. Johnson popped out in the first inning. Lee K has stolen three bases this season, so maybe looking to add another one here. Blake Johnson come in before the game, 220, batting 226 with two RBIs. There's a chopper over to second. Are they looking to turn two? There's one. No, not enough time for the play at first. So first out of Lee K at second for the second out. And Drew Lingo will come up to the plate. He popped, up, popped out to the right fielder in the first inning. So Lee K at, so Blake Johnson at first as Lingo popped a foul. There's pop foul and it'll find its way into the uh, Gators swamp. Speaking of the swamp, we're weeks away from high school football and you'll want to watch the action on CTV Beam as we'll be showing Glenwood Gators and working our way towards other local teams being highlighted. There's a pop-up in the infield and Sam Steeman makes the put out and ends the bottom half of the third inning. One man left on base as Crawdads will hit the field. After three, Patriots leading two to nothing. CTV Beam, Channel 7. We go to the top of the fourth inning. Marietta Patriots leading two to nothing, and Tyler Adams come up to the, comes up to the plate. Struck out in the first inning. Nate Dupree in his fourth inning of work. There's a grounder to second over to first and an easy put out one away Nate Stinson comes up and he's batting 0 for 1 a swing and a miss there as mentioned at the top of the, the game, if you're just joining us, Marietta is the division winner, and they'll be the first seed going into the playoffs as four teams are in each division. There's only two divisions. There's eight teams total. And the swing and a miss, and that's going to be the fifth strikeout recorded for Nate Dupree. And Sam Seaman will come up, and he drew a walk in the second inning and was left stranded at third. Had a mean swing and a miss. So Marietta will be awaiting the number two and the number three seed of this division. They'll be playing a, the two and three will be playing a one game elimination playoff. And then the winner will move on to face Marietta, and it'll be a best of three uh, for the 
to represent the division going to the championship, and the championship will be a best of three as well. The one, two, watches it like the rest of us. That'll be strikeout number six for Dupree. We're heading to the bottom of the fourth inning. Marietta leads two to nothing. You're watching Crawdads Baseball right here on CTV Beam, Channel 7. We go to the bottom of the fourth inning and Frank Wager is at the plate. Wager singled in the first, working his way up the batting, batting average ladder. As he came into the game in the third spot, only five points behind Eric White of the Patriots and Tyler Adams of the Patriots. Well, he was two behind Tyler Adams and may have caught up with him as Tyler Adams is 0, and 2, 0 for 2. And Wager watches that one and just missed the corner. Counts one and two. And swings and a miss. And that's only the second strikeout recorded for Ryan Wesley. That'll bring, bring up John Foster. That would be Wesley second strikeout of the game as of course he had more during the season came in we'll see how many and counts one and one Wesley in there, one and two. Wesley with 19 strikeouts for the season after these two strikeouts. And this is a miss. Will he make it the first? He's just trotting, so. So that is strikeout number three for the game for Wesley and 20th for the season. Price Peters comes up and he grounded to short in the second inning. Wesley delivers and it's high. It's now two and zero. Oh. That's mean swing and a miss. And it's two and one. And there's the grounder to short over the first. And that'll end the inning, three up, three down. We finish four, Marietta Patriots two, Phoenix City Crawdads zero. You're watching Sun Belt League Baseball right here on CTV Beam, Channel 7. Okay, we go to the top of the fifth inning. Drake Fricks will come up to the plate. Fricks reached base in the second inning, was stranded at second base when the Patriots left the base pads full in the second, in second inning. And that pitches in for a strike. Count evens one and one. We're at the top of the fifth. We go nine innings in the Sun Belt League. So we still got a lot of baseball left. And if you're just joining us, Marietta Patriots 
scored two in the first on a home run by Sean McDermott, two-run shot. And the count's now two and one. Fricks, Richie and White do up for the Patriots in this inning. There's a grounder to second over to first for out number one. Brent Ritchie comes up to the plate. And he reached, reached base in that second inning and was stranded at first. Counts one and oh. Richie come into the game batting 128, one home run, 10 RBIs. Count is 2-0. and oh. There's a pop-up. There's a shot. Center fielder. Will it hit over that fence? What cleared it. Over 352. And cleared that 20-foot spot in the center of Bill Bowers Park. And the Patriots lead 3-0. This is a short porch for, for the level of, of playing. As if you were to go to CVCC, their center field is 400. So there's, that may have been a routine out had it been down the street or in most parks on the college level. But you play where you're given, and everyone has the same playing field here. And that shot was cleared out. And for Eric White, it's at the plate, and he's got a one-two count. He about chased that. They're saying he's going for it. And the out is made. So Eric White is recorded with the strikeout, and that's strikeout number seven for Dupree. Now batting center fielder number five, Mason Callaway. Mason Callaway. Callaway. Mason Callaway is at the plate, and he singled in the first inning, was knocked in by the home run by McDermott, and that's been the difference of the game, plus the home run just now. And then he went, hit 4-3 grounder in the second inning. Once again, three to nothing, Patriots. Top of the fifth inning. Count evens one and one. And now the count's two and one. Mason Callaway comes into the game batting 136, and there's a number to third. Does he run it out? Let's say he ran it out. So Mason Callaway keeps the inning alive as he ran out that the dribbler that was right on the third base side, used his speed to reach the base, and we've got Noah Hill coming up to the plate and he's one for two as we had to throw the first. Runners go in and he's going to make it safely. This will be 
Callaway's sixth stolen base of the season. No Hill is batting 267 coming in. He's got four RBIs. And we, we have a slight delay as Callaway is make sure he's okay. Kind of slid in there a little, little harder than he had anticipated. He's all right now, so he's leading off. On second, there's a pop-up over our heads and out of play. Nate Dupree is ahead of the count, 0-2, and he's in his fifth inning of work. The 0-2 is low, it's not 1-2. and two. Noah, Noah Hill singled in the third and was caught stealing. I throw to, it was strikeout anyway, so the, the throw to third was a mute. And so that would be strikeout number 11 for Dupree to end the top half of the fifth inning. And the Patriots tag another one on a home run. Three to nothing Patriots. We go to the bottom of the fifth. CTV Beam, Channel 7. We go to the bottom of the fifth inning. Crawdads down three to nothing and Sam McWhorter comes up to the plate. Sam struck out in the second inning. Wesley delivers and he's in his fifth inning of work. Counts one and oh. The one oh means swing and a miss. Count evens one and one. One one, another swing and a miss, and McWhorter is behind on the count. One and two. And count evens two and two. The two two. Counts full, so McWhorter fills the count. The 3 2. There's a chopper over to Sam Seaman over the first, one away. Tanner Knowles. He too grounded over to the shortstop, and that was in the second inning. And the pitch, high and inside. We hope you're enjoying this presentation of Crawdads Baseball. I'm Victor Feliciano. With Danny Grimes behind the camera showing you the visuals. And the count's now 2 and 0. Oh. Thought about it, he backed up. He backed up and The count's now 3-0. and oh. And he draws a walk. So Tanner Knowles will reach base. And Brett Griffin will come up to the plate. Griffin popped out to right in the third inning.
Crawdads looking to break their six game losing streak. Only won one game in the last 10. And that pitch is a strike. Count evens one and one. Runners going and foul away. So Tanner Knowles will make his way back to first. Runner at first, one two count, one out. Throw to first. Knowles made it safe. The one two, check swing. They're going to check it. He went, and that's strikeout. That's strikeout number four for Ryan Wesley. And Lee K will come up to the plate. K singled in the third and was forced out at second on the fielder's choice. There's a shot, foul. Counts one and one. Two outs, bottom of the fifth inning, running going, play at second, gets away, but it wasn't far enough, or if it was, Knowles was not in a position to quickly get onto his feet and so he'll stay right there with a bunch of dirt on him. Ball goes away, doesn't bounce back and so Knowles able to make it a third. Ball just found its way underneath just enough to scoot itself underneath the padding and bounce back out, but slowing it down from bouncing back. And normally, because there's a short backstop, a lot of times the ball will bounce right back to keep the runners from advancing. But in this case, with the moisture that's on the ground, there's, you may, you, obviously you can't see it here, but there's a lot of water that's kind of stagnant back there. Um, still safe enough to play, but the ball just didn't get that bounce back that the Patriots wanted to the advantage of the Crawdads. So the Crawdads have a runner at third and the count's full on Lee K. With two outs. There's a pop up. Left center. Catch is made by the center fielder. Mason Callaway to end the inning. Crawdads knocked on the door, left the runner at third. We finished five. Marietta Patriots three, Crawdads zero. Sunbelt League Baseball right here on CTV, Beam, Channel 7. We go to the top of the sixth inning. We're moving right along. Austin Farr is at the plate. 
He's 0 for 2, strike out in the first. And there's a grounder to first. Nice pickup by Price Peters for one away. Sean McDermott is at the plate, and he's one for two. Struck out, but more importantly for the Patriots, he homered in the first two-run shot. Counts 2 and 0. Oh. Nate Dupree is in his sixth inning of work. He's already recorded eight strikeouts. There's a pop foul. Counts 2 and 1. Another pop pop foul and count evens two and two. The two two, swing and a miss. That's out number two and strikeout number nine for Nate Dupree. Tyler Adams comes up to the plate. Struck out in the first and grounded a 4-3 in the fourth inning. So nine strikeouts, Nate Dupree. So pop up out of play, heads up. Counts now two and one. And that foul makes it two and two. Nate Dupree looking to make strikeout number 10 here. And he gets it. Three up, three down. We go to the bottom of the sixth inning. Marietta leads three to nothing. Sun Belt League Baseball on CTV Beam, Channel 7. We go to the bottom of the sixth inning. We'll go to the top of the order. Blake Johnson. Popped out in the first. Hit to Fielder's Choice and then safe. Blake Johnson runs out. That was a challenging grounder there for Sam Seaman. He's had a pretty good glove and, and throw these, this game and was waiting to see if he was going to be able to make the put out there, but Johnson ran it out. Seaman had to really run some real estate to get to that ball. As Drew Lingo's at the plate. He's 0 for 2. Popped out both times. There's pop up in the infield. And catch is made by Sam Seaman. He's been a busy, been busy today. Frank Wager comes up and he's one for two. 
lingo and wager. In the top five in batting average. But Lingo's 0 for 3 is not helping his matter. And Wager looking to improve his 1 for 2 for the night. Count evens 1 and 1. Wager is singled in the first and struck out in the fourth inning. Throw to first. Game's far from over. We're at the bottom of the sixth. And that's why they played on the field. But on paper, it looked like it was with four batters in the game in the top five batting average, you think it was going to be a slugfest, but it's only been nine hits so far and three runs. And the star hitters are being put to check here. There's a grounder. One away, double play. So Frank Wager hits into a double play to end the bottom half of the sixth inning. After six, Crawdads down three to nothing. Sunbelt League Baseball on CTV Beam, Channel 7. Okay, we go to the top of the seventh inning and Nate Dupree is done for the night after recording 10 strikeouts, raising his season total from five to 15. And on the mound for the Crawdads, it's Jackson Tavel. He's playing for the University of Mississippi. Ole Miss. He's from Birmingham. 6'3", 205. Tavel. This is his third appearance. And counts even one and one. He's pitched 10 innings. He's got a 4.50 ERA. Seven strikeouts, five walks, an 0 and 1 record. And he's ahead of the count, 1 and 2. So you're seeing some D1 players here, right here on the campus of Glenwood, and right in, on your TV, Channel 7. Stinson watched it like the rest of us for the first out. Now batting with shortstop number 13, Sam. And so that'll be strikeout number 11 for Crawdads pitching. They're just not getting the offensive help they need. Sam Seaman comes up and drew a walk in the second inning and struck out looking in the fourth. A swing and a miss, one and one. Marietta's got some D1 players on their roster. And there's a grounder. Is it going to find its way up the middle? It does. Seeing its way past the two of the f fielders. And Sam Siemens at the first base pad. And Drake Fricks comes up and he reached base in the second inning, stranded at second base, and put out in the fifth. As we mentioned, uh, Marietta Ross, roster has got, got a couple of uh, CVCC, well, it's got CVCC player one. Uh, Columbus State player Austin Farr, we've seen him at the plate three times today. There's a pop foul. No, it hits the line. It hits the line. It was looking like it was foul, and it 
drops right inside. And we got a double there. Fricks. From our vantage, from our spot, looked like it was drifting our way, and it just, it just found itself right. You can see the divot right by the, uh, the line. If we had a, if we had a quick second, we could show it. It was right there. He just popped it right in there. But runners are at second and third, with one out. That's bringing up Brett Ritchie, who homered in his last at bat. Richie's reached base both of his appearance, including the solo shot in the fifth inning. And there's a pop-up. It's in the center, drifting back under it, misses, misjudges it. One run will score, throw in. Runners will be at second and third, and only one run, fortunately, was scored. Drake Fricks was backing up, and so he didn't really have the wheels to make it from home once the ball found its way to the ground. And errors, char errors charged to the center fielder, Sam McWhorter. And there's the chopper to first, looking over to third. It makes it forced out. It's going to be outmade anyway because he's out of the baseline. So Eric White, the put out. The Price Peters did a good job on checking that runner at third, keeping him at check, and then forcing Eric White to run out of the baseline. So there's two outs. And we'll go to the top of the order, and that'll bring up Mason Calloway. Count evens one and one. Calloway is two for three. Two singles scored on the home run by Sean McDermott in the first inning. Runners at second and third. There's pop this foul over to the crawdad side of one ball, two strikes, two outs. Four to nothing Patriots. Uh, there's a chop over to short, over to first, out was made. 6-3 put out. Ends the top half of the seventh inning, seventh inning, but the Patriots add another run, and so they lead 4 to nothing. Go to the bottom of seventh, Sunbelt League Baseball on CTV, Beam, Channel 7. We go to the bottom of the seventh inning, and Crawdads... Down by four. And at the plate, John Foster, the catcher, 0 for 2. Popped out to short and struck out in the fourth. Popped out a short in the first inning. Four runs, eight hits, no errors for Marietta. That counts one and one. No runs, three hits, two errors for the crawdads. Popped up. Catcher's trying to see if he's got a chance, but it's out of play. Counts now one and two. Crawdads coming in with the record of five and 13. Marietta comes in with the record of 16 and five and have secured the top seed in the division going into next week's playoffs. As, as they 
will be awaiting the winner coming out of the second and third seed of the division. It's a pop-up to the left. Is it going to stay in play? It is caught by Nate Stinson for one out. That'll bring up Price Peters. He's 0 for 2. Playing, playing fungos with Price Peters today. 0 for 2, both hits hit to him. This time it's shot over to second. Two up, two down, and Sam McWhorter comes up. McWhorter's 0 for 2, struck out in the second. Check swinging fouls. The 0 1. Count evens 1 and 1. Stop. 1 1. It's a grounder, second. Over to first. Three up, three down. Crawdads go in the bottom of the seventh inning. Seven complete. Marietta, Patriots leading four to nothing. Sun Belt League Baseball right here on CTV Beam, Channel 7. We go to the top of the eighth inning. And for the Patriots, Noah Hill is at the plate. He's one for three. Singled in the third, caught stealing, and two strikeouts. The pitch by Jackson Tavel is ball one. Tavel appears to have completed his career at Ole Miss. And there's some swing and a miss, one and one. The players here, as mentioned, are college players or they're either heading to college and we have a couple of Glenwood players in that situation as we see the ball goes two and one the pitch goes two and one and then we have the players that are in college we've got some players that are CSU CVCC some D1 schools Kennesaw State Old Miss we see here UAB there's a pop to the left Back, going back, over the head. And there'll be a double for Noah Hill. So Patriots lead off the eight with a double. Austin Farr comes up to the plate and Farr came into the game with 15 RBIs. It's tied for the league lead. And he's 0 for 3. So I was mentioning that the players are in college or completed college in the case of Tavel. And we, as soon as we see his pitch here, just pop up. This time it's going to right. Is it going to be fair? It's out of here. A home run, two run shot by Austin Farr. That'll make it six to nothing. Now batting the first base number 31, Sean McDermott. Sean McDermott is at the plate.
He's one for three with the home run in the first inning. You, you got it, you didn't get it. Did yeah, you get it? You got it? Oh, good. The 0 1. Pace is picking up just a bit as we were trying to tell some of the players here and some of the D1 schools that are represented. And the ball hits the ground and the count's 2 and 1. And so Jackson Tavel has completed his, his career at Ole Miss, according to. To the roster here. It's a pop up, it's going to find a gap, and it'll remain a single. My apologies, Jackson Tavel finished high school, so he's on his way to Ole Miss. The whole time I was thinking he had finished, because I'm looking here and it says career record, and I thought he was, they were referring to his college. There's a pop to the right, and is it gonna have enough? No, it's cleared for a home run. Another two run shot for the Patriots, and this time, Tyler Adams delivers the blow. And they are taking advantage of the pitching off a of Tavel and the short yard here at Glenwood. Score is now eight to nothing. And if you're wondering, 10 after seven, it's a mercy, but the, craw the crawdads will still have an opportunity to bat. And there's a shot to short over the first and play well done by Blake Johnson. So my apologies on the Jackson Tavel stats, but I do want to, he had a 27 and 12 career record, including a 10 and four as a senior. So he is on his way to Ole Miss. A um, little shaky start here on the mound for tonight, but hopefully he'll be able to work things out and have a stellar career at Ole Miss. At the plate is Nate Stinson. Stinson is 0 for 3 with two strikeouts. The 2 0. Fouled. 2 and 1. To so the middle of the lineup, of the Patriots were coming in. They were. Outside of McDermott, they were pretty much being checked at, held at bay and making noise here in the eighth inning. Austin Farr, who homered two three batters ago. He is playing at Columbus State. And count remains two and two. Tyler Adams, who homered in the last at bat here. Tyler Adams, who just homered. He attends Lincoln Memorial University. Nate Stinson. Stays alive. Count remains two and two. Stinson is also at Lincoln Memorial. We've seen Mason Calloway and he attends D1 at Savannah State.
Stinson watches it like the rest of us. Make that seaman watch it like the rest of us for out number two. Drake Fricks is at the plate. Eight to nothing, Marietta. Showing why they are the division winners with three games left on the dock. Well, two more games after this one for the Crawdads. And for the league, there's two. For some, there's two. There's some with three with the cancellations and rescheduling. But basically, this is the last week of the regular season. Next week, we begin the playoffs. Grounder scooped up and thrown to end the inning. And four-run barrage by the Patriots. Stretch their lead to eight to nothing. We go to the bottom of the eighth. Six more outs for the Crawdads. Try to make some noise. CTV beam, game of the week. We go to the bottom of the eighth inning and Tanner Knowles comes up to the plate for the Crawdads. Oh for one, but walked in the fifth inning. There's a shot to center. It's going to scoop up before the center fielder could get to it and be a base hit. Nice start for the Crawdads here in the eighth inning. Now the right fielder, number 13, Brett, Griffin. Brett Griffin comes up to the plate and he's 0 for 2. Popped out to the right field in third inning and struck out in the fifth. Now, there was hopes that the Crawdads were going to be able to break this six game losing streak. There's a scoop to second. Is there going to be a double play? There is. As Brett Griffin hits into a double play. And what looked like it could have been a promising is now two away. Still some chance here for the Crawdads. They were looking, the game is not over yet. We're far from it, but the eight run deficit is a deep hole for the Crawdads. And as soon as we see the pitch here, we'll, we'll share with you why, why we say that. Two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And it's a strike. Swing and a miss. And it's one and two. In the six game losing streak, they've only scored 10 runs total in those six games. So they're averaging just a little under two runs a game. So there are, they are on a hitting slump. And so with the eight run deficit, if it's time to snap out of it, this is the time to try to do that. It's a chopper to second. Nicely fielded by the second baseman, Eric White, to end the inning. After eight, it's all the Patriots, eight to nothing. Sent Belt League right here on CTV, Beam, Channel 7. We go to the ninth inning. It's all Patriots, eight to nothing. Brent Ritchie comes up to the plate. He hit a home run in the fifth inning, solo shot. And Tavel, Jackson Tavel is in his second inning of work. Make that his third inning of work. And count tables ahead, 0 and 2. And 
And there's a swing and a miss for strikeout. And that's the first strikeout. Make that, uh, that's the second strikeout for Tavel. In his stretch of work, and Eric White will come up to the plate. Oh, for three. He was leading the he was leading the league in the batting average, and 0 for three is going to drop that a bit there. It may actually drop below Adams, although Adams is one for four, so that'll get adjusted. Frank Wager for the Crawdads is. One for three. Swing and a miss. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Tavel after a real rocky eighth inning. And we go to the top of the order and Mason Callaway set the plate. And as we mentioned in the last inning, he's playing D1 ball at Savannah State. But he was due, but we've got a pinch, pinch hitter, number 33. Sorry, we don't have connections of making the adjustments uh, on the roster. And so number 33 is at the plate for Mason Calloway. And we're actually looking to see David Scoggins is at the plate. And that was swing and a miss for two and, two and one. Scoggins, 6'4", 270, plays for Bryan College. And he watches that one, counts. Now, Deuce is wild. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Once again, we're at the top of the ninth inning. And counts full. Three and two. Let's try that. There's pop, pop foul and Scoggin stays alive. Looking up Scoggin's stats, he has a .077 batting average. He's got one RBI. And this is his 14th at, well the walk will keep him at 13 official at bats. And Noah Hill will be at the plate. Noah Hill, two for four, scored in the eighth inning off home run by Austin Farr. And Tavel delivers a strike. Count evens one and one. The one one pop up and over our heads. I would have had a glove, I would have caught that. Counts one and two. And there's right field. It's going to hit the gap. And it passes the right fielder. Runners going to be at second and third. 
as Noah Hill just went underneath the tag. And they'll be and it'll be awarded as it'll be awarded a single, an error on the right fielder. And Austin Farr will come up to the plate, homered in his last at bat, two run shot. Meanwhile, the Patriots have runners at second and third with two outs. Tavel with a great start of two strikeouts back to back. And it's now in, in a jam here. See if he can keep the crawdads down by, by eight. Base it here if two runs scores, that'll get the two ten runs, but there's a shot. There's a, is it going to have? It's no, no one's moving. It's gone. The the defense just sat there and watched it like us, and it's a three-run shot. A three-run shot by Austin Farr with back-to-back -back home runs for him. Five RBIs for the day for Austin Farr, and it is now 11 to nothing, Patriots. Sean McDermott is at the plate. Two for four, homered in the first inning. Scored. Scored on a home run by Tyler Adams, who is on deck. And the count's 0-2. So Tavel could not get out of the jam and dished up the home run. And McDermott watched it like the rest of us to end the inning. However, three more tagged off by the Patriots. Crawdads. Last attempt. Bottom of the ninth. Sunbelt League Baseball, CTV, Beam, Channel 7. Last chance for the Phoenix City Crawdads. Down 11 to nothing. They're top of the order. Blake Johnson at the plate. A swing and a miss. Meanwhile, with all the offensive shots by the Patriots, Brian Wesley is on pace for a complete game shutout. He's got allowed four hits so far. And he's not doing it with a lot of power pitching. He's only had four strikeouts in eight innings. It counts two and one. There's just some good defense behind him. We've seen a lot of good defenses with Sam Seaman. That's short and Eric White at second base. And then we got a new second baseman for the Patriots. Switch some players around, looks like. Counts two and two, no outs. There's a shot up the middle, base hit. Now we're hearing some noise from the crawdads side. Been quiet for the most part. Drew Lingo comes up to the plate. He's 0 for 3. One thing, so I'll be, let's get this first pitch in. There's base hit. And then back to back base hits by the crawdads, and they're saying, We're not done yet. We are not done yet. 
Frank Wager comes up to the plate. Mean swing. Can you see him okay? Yeah. Runners at first and second. Another big cut. And Wager is down. It's behind 0 and 2. Wager is 1 for 3. Singled in the first, struck out in the fourth and hit into a double play and struck out here for one out. John Foster is at the plate and he's 0 for 3 with the strikeout in the fourth inning. And swinging to miss. And it looks like Wesley's getting stronger by the inning here. And just firing some there. Still has some pop on that pitch in the ninth inning. He fires another one. Head of the count, 0 and 2. Throwing strikes right now. Just letting the defense. And after giving up two hits in a row, he's fired back with two straight strikeouts. And Price Peters comes up representing the last chance for the Crawdads. Price Peters comes in 0 for 3. Crawdads first and second, two outs. See if they can be pushed around here in the bottom of the ninth inning. And there's a base hit. Will they end the shutout? There's going to be a throw over at third with the out be played. It's safe. And the shutout is broken. Lingo's. Safe at third. Blake Johnson scores the first run for the Crawdads. Price Peters with RBI single. And it is 11 to 1. And we'll have a pitching change by Marietta. You're watching Sunbelt Baseball here on CTV, Beam Channel 7. Okay, there's a pitching change, and for the Marietta Patriots, Juan Carlos Jimenez. Juan Carlos Juan Carlo Jimenez. And this is only his second batter he's faced in this season. And that pitch is high. His, he's only had one batter he faced, and that batter hit a home run. Crawdads with two outs, runners in the corner. The shutout has been broken. The runners are the responsibility will be tagged to Ryan Wesley if they score. The respons his responsibility. But Wesley pitched eight and two-thirds of an inning. He's on the verge of the shutout, and then when the shutout was broken, the coach said that's enough. And it counts now one and two. So with the 10 run lead, they'll give Jimenez an opportunity. The ball bounces up in front, but not far enough to score the run. But the runner at first will go to second easily. That's Price Peters. So Peters is at second. 
Andrew Lingo is at third. At this moment, not really a big concern for the Patriots. They just want to make sure they can get this out at the, at the plate and call it the night. Meanwhile, counts three and one. And the bases are now loaded. So Jimenez walks the first batter he put, faces tonight. And Tanner Knowles comes up to the plate. And Tanner is one for two, has three plate appearances as he singled in the eighth and walked in the sixth. Grounded a short in the first. And that pitch is inside, high and inside. And this, that's not intentional. I mean, you got the bases loaded. You're not going to try to force in a run that way. And two straight pitches inside and two and zero. Oh. And quickly is three and zero. Oh. Once again, bases are loaded. And the coach is coming out. Let's see if is it going to talk to him or and saying, let's uh, get someone else to clean this up. After the visit to the mound, there was no pitching change. Counts three and zero. Oh. And the first pitch after the talk is three and one. Tanner Knowles. Pops a foul, it's gonna stay in play, no, it's out. And so, count's now full, Tanner Knowles with the opportunity here to try to scratch some more runs for the Crawdads. The three, two, the pop up, is it gonna stay in play? Infielders, the catch is made, and that's the ball game, folks. Crawdads left the bases loaded. They did score a run, and the Crawdads go down 11 to 1. Crawdads record now goes to 5 and 14, and Marietta moves to 17 and 5. For Danny Grimes behind the camera, I'm Victor Feliciano. You've been watching Sunbelt League Baseball right here on CTV Beam, Channel 7.